the Teat Biscuit and Diplo Picture Battles Mallow's Remix Project is here. Let's get to it. Today I'm going to show you all the little secrets and all the little details about this professional project. Now let's get to the first section of this tutorial. This powerful bass has two different parts. In the first two bars, it has a very aggressive character with a lot of high-end frequencies. But in the next six bars, it becomes a fat and thick beautiful mid-bass. First, let's take a listen to the solo of the all basses together. This one is the aggressive part. This is the fat and thick part. For the next six bars. And guys, this aggressive part has very simple layers. There is a top layer here, which is doing the most part for the aggressiveness for of this bass. Here is the side layers. Here is the noise layer. Here is the mid bass, which is the same in all the other parts. Here are the side informations for this main mid bass. And here is our sob. A very heavy one. Now let's get to the top layer of this bass. Very simply, as you might have guessed, this is a simple sob wave with nothing. Here is OTT, here is tube saturation, and here is a filter which I'm not using it. I'm just using the drive right here. It has a very beautiful saturation. And in the FX section, I have added more saturation here. Subtle difference, but it is making the sound warmer and it, and it is adding high harmonics to the sound. I have cut the low end here, and here is the first important OTT for this sound. I turn this off. The difference is very important, and I have added some more high ends to this sound with this OTT with adjusting the bands right here. Next, there is this EQ. I have increased the frequencies that in my mind were more melodics. It was very important for this sound. I turn this off. This is a very important improvement for this sound. Next, I have added some shimmer and high end to this sound by 72% with this fresh air. I turn this off. Subtle difference, but very important in the long run. Next, we have this another important OTT. I turn this off. This is taking control of the dynamics of this top bass layer. And next, another EQ. Here, I felt that we needed more high frequencies in the sound. I turn this off. Yeah. By this EQ, we are having less mid frequencies because we are focused on the high frequencies. And of course, with the boost right here, I have made the sound closer to the listener's ear. And after that, we have this very simple side chain. In the side layer, it is the same as this top bass layer, but with some stereo imaging plugins. And as always, I have used the wider to add a little bit of side information to the sound. And after that, I have used ozone imager with six milliseconds of delay between the left and right channels and 59 and 60% I have widened the sound. After that I wanted to add some difference between this side layer and between the main top bass and for adding differences I always use EQs to add difference between the side layer and the mono information layer. So here with this EQ I have boosted this kind of frequency and in my ears it was a beautiful one. Let's take a listen to this. And by adding these two EQs, I'm making the difference between the mono channel and the stereo channel to avoid face cancellations and other problems that might occur when the mono channel and the stereo channel are the same. And after that, here is my rack that I explained in my other tutorials, but with this one, with three EQs, I'm taking out all the mono information from this sound, and we have it just in the side part of the mix. Very important. And after that, just the side chain. Next layer is very simple. This is just a simple noise with a side chain at the end of the chain. And here, I just decided to use noise escalator in the serum. I have turned off all the oscillators. And here is alpha NZ, a very simple noise. Next, we have our main bass in this drop. And in this bass, let's take a listen to solo of that. 
this is a beautiful bass. In the serum section, very simply, I have used the three octaves for this sound. This is the zero octave, this is minus one octave, and this is minus two. And this oscillator, this is a simple sign, but this one is very similar to the analog PD sign that I use always, and they have some more high harmonics related to a simple sine wave. And here is our envelope, nothing else in this section. And in the effect section, as always, I have used some OTT with a gain at five and half dB. Here is tube distortion, a lot of it. And I have used this filter without using the cutoff, and I'm just using the drive knob right here to add a little bit of saturation to this sound. Simply, as always, I have added saturation at the start of the chain. After that, this EQ, I'm taking out a little bit of the muddiness in the sound. Nothing important right here. Next EQ, I have taken out a lot of more boxy and muddy frequencies from the sound. I turn these two EQs off. but it has made the sound cleaner, of course. After that, as always, I have added some higher harmonics to my bass with the great R bass plugin from Waves. I love this one. This is a huge difference into the mix down, of course. After that, this simple EQ, I have added some more saturation right here, five dBs of saturation, and I felt that I needed more saturation, so I added Fab Filter Saturn, a lot of drive right here. Let me turn this two off. This is a very simple mid bass, which is not bad, but for this drop, we want it to be fattier and thicker. So I turn this to on. A nice improvement to the sound. And next, a little bit of simple EQs, a little bit of boost right here. And at the end, I have used my rack, which it adds drive and decrease output at the same time, as you can see right here. And I have put this rack in one of my other tutorials. I think it is in Rohike tutorial. Check it out. And next, we have our sub. And here is a big difference between an amateur production and a professional production. Bala is using a different sub here at the first two bar and a different sub here in in the next six bars. The sub in the first two bar is very aggressive and it is like an earthquake. It is very heavy and the patterns are 16 notes like we had in Julian Jordan tutorial. Let's take a listen to this and guys you have to listen to the subs with your headphones or studio monitors to hear them properly. This is a sub for the first two bars, but here the sub is very simple. Is, this is just one long note with a side chain on it and it is very clean and it is very danceable. But here, very aggressive. Let's take a listen to the sub basses in the whole context of the mix and pay close attention to the low end of this drop. This is a very beautiful and powerful choice that Mala has made for his drop. And my subs are very simple, guys. As in all of my tutorials, a very simple analog B design here. I choose it from here. In the FX section, OTT, tube distortion, and the cutoff. After that, as always, I have used submarine to add low harmonics to my sub, and I have used R bass to add higher harmonics to my sub. A little bit of EQ and the sidechain right here. There's nothing else going on with the subs. And that's it, guys, for the bass section. If you have found this video useful so far, please consider liking and subscribing. And of course, this gives me a lot of motivation to make more of this stuff. And also hit the notification bell for all the future projects and breakdowns. Thank you, friends. Here is one of my favorite parts of this powerful drop. Mello is using some kind of xylophone sound in his drop in a very genius way that I haven't seen anywhere else. The drum layerings are also very powerful. First, let's take a listen to the solo of the drum bus. very beautiful and very powerful. A lot of details are in the mix down of the drums and in the arrangement of the drums that make it work and sets the professional production from the amateur production. First guys, let's get to my favorite part, which I know it is your favorite part too, is the use of xylophones in this drop. And it is very unique and very creative. Heads off to Mela for sure. This is the xylophone. Guys, if you pay close attention, this is just one hit xylophone and it is going up semitone by semitone to the top for the first one bar here. First one is at zero semitones and warp mode is as complex. Next one for one semitone goes up. Next one, as you might have guessed, for two semitones. 
three semitones, four semitones, and they go all the way up to 15 semitones. And of course, you, you could consolidate all these hits right here. And in the envelopes, in the clip mode, use the transposition and use a transpose automation for this effect. But it wasn't as accurate and close as I wanted. And most mix engineers work with audio. So why not to try to do that? Here. And by doing this, of course, this gets a lot of more work than just using a simple automation. But this one gets you a cleaner result. Let's take a listen again. Pay close attention how the pitches are changing for each hit. Very beautiful. And guys, in the effect section, very simply, I have just cut the low end, and here I have used Echo Boy as a chain. This is this is the wet chain. This is the dry chain, and in the wet chain, our Echo Boy setting is at four, uh, one four notes. Feedback is right here, mixed at hundred percent because we are using it as a chain, and I wanted to saturate the delays that we are generating from this Echo Boy. So I added some saturation, and I increased the output to hear the delays. And the delays in the automation part, guys, I turned on just for this four last notes right here. The delay is turned off right here. Let's take a listen. And Mala very creatively is using delay for this part that we have no xylophones. Let's take a listen in the whole context, context of the mix and pay close attention to the delays that are played right here. This, this delay is very important for this part. If I turn it off, The drop becomes empty, but I turn this on. Very beautiful choice. And after that, I have added some reverb, very simple reverb, child room preset that I use a lot in a chain like this, wet chain, dry chain. And that's it guys for the xylophones. And next we have in the group of xylophones here in this part, let's take a listen to the solo of them. And in my opinion, this is not a xylophone. It is made of xylophone, but it is sounding like a cowbell or a percussion sound for this drop. in the whole context of the mix. Wow. Very beautiful. First one, this is strong xylo. It's very simple. I'm using frequency shifter right here. I turn this off first. This is doing an important thing to these xylophones. These are the same hits right here, guys. And this important trick that I want to tell you, again, sets your productions apart from the amateur productions. And guys, this frequency shift there, pay close attention to this automation right here. Yeah, this is changing the higher pitch of the second hits right here. And it won't let these xylophones be the same when they are played. I turn this off, it becomes very digital. We don't want that. With the drop. This is a good idea, but the percussions are sounding very digital. We want every hit to be different, or at least these two hits to be different. And I don't use the warp menu and the semitone knob right here, because it changes the character of these xylophones. We want it to be subtle, so I just use this fine tune knob right here in the frequency shifter. If I change this for just one semitone down, let's take a listen what happens to the character of the sound. Again, this is amateur sounding. We don't want this. We want it to be subtle and natural. But with frequency shift there, let's take a listen. That's what we want. And after that, I have added some Saturn to add some higher harmonics to the sound and a little bit of high frequency boosting with this beautiful analog EQ of Ableton. And in the next section, guys, we have these tiny xylophones. And these are very genius. Again, let's take a listen. In the drop, pay close attention just to these parts. Wow, very beautiful. Guys, very simply here, we have three notes. The note C, the note E, and the note B. And I had this one shot right here. And again, I didn't want it to change the character with this semitone knob right here. So what was the solution? Of course, using frequency shifter right here. This one is at note C, so I didn't want any frequency shifter, but for note E, when I, when I wanted to turn it to E, I had two options. I could just use this one and add five semitones, for example, to make it an E, but the character of the sound was ruined. So I decided to do it with frequency shifter here, minus 788 hertz equals to E right here, relative to C. 
this equal is n. A very natural change in the pitches. And last one is note B with minus 56 hertz in the frequency section of frequency shifter. And now let's take a listen and pay close attention to the pitch changes of these patterns. C, E, B, C, E, B. Again, the pattern repeats right here. Very beautiful. And by the way, these are 16 notes. Nice. And this was the xylophone part, guys. And in the drum section, there are a lot of powerful techniques happening. First, let's begin with our kicks. Guys, before explaining to you the kicks, I want to play you the kicks. And I want to pay close attention. There are some changes happening in the kicks. We have two kicks in the drop. And I want you to find the difference between these two kicks. Guys, the mix down is very professional. I want to turn the two multiband compressions that I have used on the kicks. I want to turn this off in the two kicks. And it is very funny. The whole mix falls apart and it becomes an amateur mix. And most mixes that I hear from my producer friends or from not very big labels, their releases are sounding very amateur to my ears. And of course, this is my opinion. But with turning these two multiband off on the kicks, now let's take a listen to the mix and it is sounding very ugly. The body of the kick is very overpowering. This is very ugly. Guys, what I have done here is that I have used the multiband compression right here and I have compressed the body of the kick because I didn't want it to have a lot of power in this drop. It wasn't right for this drop. And for the first hit of the kick, we have some kind of a body. But for the second hit, we have a lot less body for the kick. I have compressed it a lot. And Mala again is a genius because in the first hit of his kicks, he has the body. But in the second hit, he doesn't have the body because the clap is playing right here. This is very genius. So pay close attention to the 250 and around 500 of this kick, to the body of the kick. But the second hit has a lot less frequencies in that area. It has a lot less bodies. Now take a listen to the kicks and the claps. I turn the multibands off again. And of course, guys, you can use a dynamic EQ like Pro-Q3 instead of multiband compression. And these are off. And the mix is going to be awful again. Pay close attention, especially to this hit when the claps are playing underneath. Super amateur mix. But very simply, taking out the body of the kick. And now, the kicks are sitting perfectly in the mix. And guys, in the next section, as always, I have three claps, the attack layer, the distorted layer, and the side information layers. Very simple. And in the symbol sections, we have the main hi-hats. Very beautiful. We have the second hi-hats. They are 16 notes, and they play after the first two bars to add more energy to the drop. And we have the shakers underneath. Very beautiful. And let's take a listen again to the drums and see how Mala is using these two layers, the hi-hat number two and the shakers to add energy to the rest of the drop after this aggressive part. Pay close attention to the cymbals right here. Very beautiful. I turn this two off. And now let's take a listen how the groove of the drop falls apart without these two simple layers. Here is very good. Here, the drop lacks those very subtle high-end symbols that we have added right here. So I turn them on. A very, very important change. And that's it, guys, for this section. Thanks for watching, friends. If you have any questions about the tips that we talked about today, just ask me in the comments. And I love you so much. Bye. Bye.